Hello everyone, Helen here. How are you today? I hope you're okay and uh, thanks for pausing for a little while to come and listen to me and uh, yes, maybe you've just stopped for a tea or coffee and or you've got a bit of knitting or crochet or sewing out and uh, yeah, just I'm just going to chat on to you a bit. Uh, mostly today, I'm not sure it's a very exciting one today, but you know, I've decided I would pop in every week and that's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm reluctant to say it'll be shorter than usual because it might be, but whenever I say that, it, it never is. So I don't know. Um, if, if it's your first time here, uh, I'm sitting in my craft room here in Durham in the northeast of England and I do spend quite a lot of hours in here, but I'm also a piano teacher working from home, so that keeps me quite busy as well. So you're very, very welcome here, everybody. And uh, so, yes, yeah, so today, uh, well, I'm kind of in between having just been away on a lovely long weekend, which I'm actually going to tell you more about um, in a, like a separate, I'm going to do a little travel vlog of the place that I've just been to. And then very soon we're going off in the camper van again. So, so I'm just trying to squeeze this in to make sure that you've got your uh, little weekly dose of Helen. <laughs> and I'm just going to show you some of the small finished projects that I've, I've um, you know, I've, I've finished since the last time I chatted to you about uh, knitted things. I think they're all knitting. Yes, they are. Uh, and we're going to go into the kitchen as well. Um, and Oh, also, I'm going to, uh, I've got a little story for you as well. So just a few, few things. <laughs> you never, you, know, you never quite know what I'm going to be chatting about, do you? Uh, so anyway, let's get on, let's get on to finished projects. That sounds a very waffly start. <laughs> um, anyway, so first, well, I'll, I'll begin with um, this, this new chicken here sitting beside me because I'm sure you noticed that there was another one. So this is actually my third emotional support chicken that I've made. This one is a gift for somebody. So the one sitting down here that you can just see popping her head up, that um, she's mine. Uh, but this one's going to be a gift for somebody. And I've used more leftover chunky wool. Uh, and I think it was, I think it's drops big wool in two different colours. And then a little bit of Rowan Cocoon and then a bit of uh, Stylecraft Special Chunky for the beak. So it's all chunky yarn because I, I just think I love the size that that chunky makes. I have seen some people knitting them smaller and they're just equally lovely. But I just love that, that this is quite uh, makes a quite a life size chicken. And I like that about it. And um there, there is now, I can't remember if I said before, there is a crochet version out which makes exactly the same shape and style of chicken. Uh, but, you know, that's good if you, if you don't knit and you just crochet, then uh, that's that would be nice. I'm tempted to buy the pattern just to try it, but I don't really need to make a crochet one. And on the whole, I do find that knitted toys are just that little bit softer and squishier than crocheted ones. I love crocheted toys, uh, but they, the the fabric that you create uh, is much uh, denser and a little bit more sculptured. I mean, it's perfect for making amigurumi and, and things, but uh, this, yeah, I, I'm happy with this knitted chicken. So you're going to go and give somebody else some emotional support, aren't you? So you can sit down there. Can you sit down there properly? Yeah. Okay then, so next, right, okay, it's a little, it's the little bear that I've already shown you, but she's got some extra accessories. Uh, and so last time I showed you, her to you, she just had her little dress with the toadstools around the, the bottom and the little frilly, frilly edging to it. And so I decided well, actually, I think it was one of you viewers in the comments told me that there was a free hat pattern for the teddy bears. So I went off and had a look at that and thought, oh, that looks really cute. 
So I decided to make the hat. And um, you, when you knit the hat, uh, it comes out bigger than you actually need it for the size of the teddy's head. And that's because you take it through a, a fulling process or felting. And uh, you can put it in the washing machine and it'll just felt, but you've, you've got no control over what size it, it becomes, how much it shrinks. So the pattern recommends that you just do it by hand, uh, and which works as long as you've used 100% wool. So I, I used, this is just a Shetland Spindrift yarn that I used for the hat, yes. And you, to, the, the process is, is dipping the hat into hot water, uh, putting a little spot of uh, washing up liquid on it and then rubbing it very vigorously, giving it lots and lots of rubbing uh, sort of all over the hat and then and then putting it in cold water and that kind of fixes the fibres where they are and you can then see what size it is and if you want it a bit smaller you just go through the whole hot water soapy uh, you know washing up liquid put it in cold water again uh, and you just go through it and I did that process three times and then thought thought that the hat would be the right size for the teddy and when I when it was dry and I brought it back upstairs, I noticed that on my desk in, in here there was just one random tiny little flower, you know those little little flowers made of ribbon. Um, and I thought that's just perfect, it would be just perfect to sew on the hat. So that's what I did and I think that, that does finish it off very nicely. So that was the hat and then I thought well if she's got a hat on then it, you know she's obviously going to go out uh, somewhere so she needed a jacket so I made her a little jacket uh, and that isn't a free pattern that uh, yeah you have to buy that separately but it does come with three different versions one plain one and then a couple with patterns in them uh, and I decided just to do the plain one first of all uh, you know so that I could check that it was the right size which it was perfect size I put it on her and thought well it's a bit plain um, and so I went searching for a little bit of decorative, uh, I don't know what you call that stuff, a decorative string of flowers <laughs> and I found this pale pink which just looked uh, lovely and it matched the pale pink button that I put on at the top there, the little flower button there. So really pleased with that and then I, finally I made her a little rucksack or backpack. And I came across that when I was uh, looking for the hat pattern. And uh, so I started knitting it. Again, I used Shetland Spindrift. And, um, it, uh, but I realised it was actually going to be quite big. I thought, oh, this is a big rucksack for a little bear. And then I looked properly at the top of the pattern and it said it was for the bigger bears. I think the bigger bears are about, I don't know, 12 inches or... I don't know. Um, I'm not sure. Anyway, I decided to carry on knitting it and then when I finished I just put it through the same felting process as I've done with the hat and I, th I think it looks really nice. It gives it a really nice finish and it's it's perfect size for her. So there you are, Pom. Pom is ready for a little adventure, although her adventure might actually be going to be living with uh, another little girl whose birthday is in May. <laughs> so so we might have to say goodbye to Pom, but I can always make another one. <laughs> and oh, and you might be wondering if she's got anything in her, her little backpack. Uh, and yes, Pom had whispered to me that there's something that she would really like um, that would help to keep her company uh, if she went away to live somewhere else. And so here we go. Can you see? You see what's inside? But, uh, yep, it's a little rabbit, a tiny, tiny rabbit. So here is its tiny little rabbit. Well, hopefully I'm showing you a photo now because it's so tiny you'll hardly see it with me showing you like this, just holding it up. Uh, this was uh, a pattern that I did buy. I bought it on Etsy. Uh, hopefully I'll put the name of the pattern maker on the screen because I cannot remember 
and it's knitted uh, on two millimeter needles and uh, some sock yarn, some four ply, quite far, fine four ply I would say. Uh, it's knitted in the round and the head, body, arms, legs, ears are all knitted separately. You have to sew them all together. Tiny little thing like that. Oh my goodness. That is the height of fiddliness. Uh, and and you do add a little bit of stuffing to the head and body, but you don't really need stuffing in the arms and legs. And so I, I, I pretty much followed, I followed most of the pattern. Uh, in the photograph in the pattern, it just shows the rabbit with one wearing one sock. And I decided I didn't want my rabbit to just to have one sock and one cold foot. So <laughs> I decided to do two socks, but odd socks, because I thought that would still make him a little bit quirky. And the thing that I didn't follow in the pattern was making the arms. Uh, I just did the arms as an eye cord. Uh, which is a lot easier than having, uh, you know, needles and going around with six stitches only. Uh, it's a much, much straight, more straightforward than that. And they worked out completely fine. And the legs, I did similar. The legs I started uh, knitting in the round, as the pattern said, but then um, changed it to an eye cord when I got further up his leg. And that did make it more straightforward. So... I think he is absolutely gorgeous and I will be making some more of those definitely despite the fiddliness of them. Okay so that's Tiny Rabbit. Right and then final finished thing I have to show you. Well you won't be surprised to know that I've gone back to the book Motion Friends. <laughs> well Dapper Donkey kept kind of hinting to me that he would really, really be quite keen on meeting another donkey. So, of course, I obliged and I have made him a friend. Here she is. So she is called Florence. So you can call her Florence if you want, but she likes it to be pronounced in the French way. Uh, she has uh, French relatives and she, she, she likes the French part of her heritage. So she's called Florence. And I've uh, knitted her from a Shetland Spindrift again. I've been using that a lot recently. Uh, haven't, been, haven't done any clothes for her yet, which is why she's just borrowed a scarf from one of the other toys. And, uh, yeah, so mostly in this grey. So uh, here's Dapper. Dapper was a, a brownish colour with a creamy coloured muzzle and dark hooves and I have chosen a, a mid grey for Florence and a light grey muzzle and then some dark coloured hooves uh, and she did have a bath as well but not a head so a head is you can definitely see the difference when you close up and when you're touching it to um, her having been blocked from the neck down uh, but uh, I, I like the rough look the reason that I used such a and spindrift for the donkey was that on on dapper I really liked that roughness that there was to him his the yarn I used for him was from a kit from daughter of a shepherd uh, it's some it's called ram jam yarn and it was four ply but the but he did end up being a lot taller than it said he would in the book and I didn't think not that my attention was that far out, really. So I was really expecting the the new donkey to be quite a bit smaller. I thought it, she might be closer to the measurement in the book, but really, I mean, I haven't got them standing on a flat surface there, but there's very little difference. I don't know. It's hard. It's hard to stand them side by side because because of the shape. Look, they're bent. <laughs> well, I think they're pretty much the same. Anyway, that I know they're going to be best of friends, and. Oh, the one thing you might have noticed about France is that she's a donkey with a wonky ear. Uh, and I have no idea why that happened. But, you know, I made Dapper Donkey there and both of his ears stood up and this ear stood up. And I have no idea why this ear decided to go out to the side. Uh, my uh, opinion in my family is divided. There might, there's an opinion that I should make the ear stay up which would be easy to do I could just put some extra stitches in and it would stay up or 
or others think that I should just leave his ear wonky. What do you think? <laughs> Shall I leave his ear like that? Her ear, sorry, um, like that. You don't mind, do you really? No, but uh, it, it's amazing how different she is to Dapper. She's, you know, I, I did her mouth in the same way and her nostrils, but she still looks different. She looks like a completely new character. I did slightly bigger eyes this time. I'm not sure what size they are, uh, but they are slightly bigger than, than Dapper's. And uh, so she's just waiting for her clothes to be ready. Uh, she, I'm busy making her, I'm adapting a pattern to make her a pinafore. And <clears throat> I didn't want to make dungarees the same as Dapper's don Dapper donkeys, not even in another colour. I, I didn't want them to have matching outfits in any way. So I'm using the uh, dungarees pattern that I knitted for the bear, for Mush the bear, but I'm adapting that to make it into a pinafore. So we'll see. I'm part way through that. It's taking ages, but uh, there we are. So there's Florence. <laughs> um, so I mentioned I'd been away. Uh, just I've just come back from being away as I record this, and uh, I'm going to tell you all about it in next week's podcast. Fingers crossed if I get that finished in time. Uh, but I came across a book when we were browsing in bookshops and really loved it what have i done with it oh it's here um and i just thought i would read you a bit of it it's called a horse called now and it was just appropriate because uh, a couple of podcasts ago i've been talking about mindfulness or mindlessness um this just made me think of that now the rules uh, i looked at the rules for whether you can read stories um you know on youtube videos and you're not meant to read whole stories but it is okay to read excerpts apparently oops i just dropped that now um so i'm going to sort of read some bits of it and then paraphrase others and show you some of the pictures from it but i think even though this is written for children so many children's books are just as good for adults we we you know we get what the message is about something or well, we can just appreciate the artwork in a different way to children. Uh, so children's picture books are equally valid for adults as for children, in my opinion. So let me read you A Horse Called Now. A horse called now stood in her field of green, swishing her bright white tail. Her soft eyes saw the tiniest blinks of magic, buds opening, dragonflies dancing, her sharp ears listened to the music of the air and earth. Birds singing, the chatter of crickets. And loudest of all, the boom, boom heartbeats of the other animals as they worried and hurried. The horse is greeted by a few anxious animals. First of all, some rabbits who are worried that there's a fox after them. The horse just says, can you see him now? They peered at the horizon. No, but he might sneak up. Or he might not, said now. At this moment, all is well. And then along comes Hen and her fluffy chicks. And they're worried that the magpie is going to get them. And then along comes a sheep and her lambs. And they are really worried about the farmer's new sheepdog. But suddenly there's a loud bang and they all get a terrible fright. Oh, poor animals. Don't worry, Now said, feeling a tremble in the earth beneath her hooves. It's just the boom beat of thunder. So they go to a, a barn and rush straight out as soon as they've gone in. And Now has a look inside and there she sees some rather scared looking creatures, a magpie and a fox and a sheepdog. And they tell her that they're not scary at all. So now the horse persuades the other animals to come in. And she says that she'll keep watch until the storm passes over. Why are you never afraid? The animals asked, shaking raindrops from her mane. Now said, sometimes I feel afraid. But when I'm afraid, I breathe in and out and let the feelings come and then go. 
Nothing lasts forever. She told them about the many storms that had come and gone before. When I was a foal, I thought the thunder and lightning would never stop. My mother told me that even the wildest storms would always end. And they did. The animals all listened to now. And then the storm goes away and they're back in their field of green. And now stands there listening. Her sharp ears listen to the music of the air and earth. Birds singing, the chatter of crickets. Softest of all were the gentle heartbeats of the other animals as they grazed and played with their friend called Now. All is well, smiled Now. All is well. So isn't that a lovely story? And it just has a lesson for us that, you know, are we okay right now? Yes, we are. Let's just be in that moment. And if there's a bit of a storm going on or if there's terrible things happening to us and distressing things, all of those things will pass over. And, you know, and we can breathe easy again. So I'm going to finish today by taking you off into the kitchen to do a bit of baking. And I'm baking something that I, I had never made before, a buttermilk tart. And I found the recipe in a lovely recipe book that I've got called The Book of Old Tarts, which is slightly amusing. Uh, and it's it, it contains all historical recipes of all different kinds of tarts I have. I think once uh, long ago on my podcast, I made the treacle tart out of it, but uh, I hadn't uh, I hadn't made anything else. So I decided to make buttermilk tart. And in the book, there's a little bit of history of each of the recipes. And apparently, uh, well, in the first place, buttermilk used to be around in great profusion. It was a byproduct of butter making. And all the country folk would, you know, it was just a common thing that they used and drank. And um, and then it became fashionable in the cities for the city dwellers to drink it. And that, that was in the 17th and 18th centuries. And at some point, the um, pilgrims took this buttermilk pie or tart recipe with them when they went to America. And my book says that um, that it's that this buttermilk pie recipe is supposedly the epitome of, you know, cosy family cooking. <laughs> I don't know if that's true. Tell me if you live if you live in, in the States. Um, is, is buttermilk pie a, a lovely sort of um, common cosy dessert? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, and anyway, so uh, but apparently the recipe did originate here um, in England in the in the Middle Ages, roughly. Nobody's really quite sure. Uh, so, yes, I. Uh, oh, yes. And if you're a fan of um, uh, uh, Little House on the Prairie, then you you might be interested to know that buttermilk is mentioned in there. Uh, once uh, Laura and her sister's mum has finished some butter making, she gives the girls a glass of buttermilk to drink each, fresh buttermilk. But actually the buttermilk that we buy today is very different to that byproduct of butter. It's more like um, the consistency of yoghurt and it's got a little tangy taste to it. However, it does make a really, really nice uh, pie or tart. So. Yeah, let's, let's go off and do some cooking.
Oh, well, I knew I shouldn't have said at the start that this might be shorter than usual. It's about the same, isn't it? <laughs> Oh. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed coming into the kitchen with me and you might like to have a go. If you fancy a go at that particular recipe, I have put the recipe into the description box uh, below the video if you want to, if you want to uh, make that. But I will have to go now and I hopefully will be back again next week. If Thank you uh, to everybody who's made comments and if you find that your comment hasn't been responded to very quickly. It might just be that I'm away in the camper van and, uh, you know, I don't always, I'm not always in an area which has got good internet, so I'm not always able to uh, write, write some replies. I do love replying and I will eventually, even if I'm a bit delayed doing that, I might just put a heart on your comment to show you who I've read it. Um, so, but don't ever worry. I'm, I'm not going to ignore your comments because I so love reading them. And, I think, yes, I'm going to leave it there. I'll, I'll stop waffling and say goodbye and wish you a lovely week. Have a nice busy time, not too busy and take great care of yourself. I will be back again very soon. OK, then. Bye.